Good morning. I'm delighted to say Sarsfield's All Ireland Senior Camogie Championship winning captain Neve McGrath is with us. Neve, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, good morning. Good, great. <laughs> Can't complain now. Um, the benefits of winning on a Saturday means that officially the Monday club is actually a Sunday club. So, how are you? Is, has everything calmed down? Are you all. Uh, there's a few, yeah, I, there's a few days club now, if you don't be honest. <laughs> uh, so, a bit tired this morning, but uh, it's great. Like, everyone's kind of in celebratory mode anyway with the Christmas. So, uh, any excuse. <laughs> so, um, to win one All Ireland in one year is uh, fairly remarkable. To win two in the same year is ridiculous. Uh, what, like, what level of celebrations do you get to at this point? Uh, like, it was unbelievable anyway. You kind of, um, like to achieve it in the calendar year was unbelievable and the celebrations were probably it was the sweetest one yet because of the amount of injuries we had and the calibre of players we were missing and who we managed to still eke it out so ah, yeah like it's unbelievable it's kind of hard to take it all in at the moment it's been a whirlwind the last couple of days but um, so privileged and lucky to be in the position we are in When did you did you come straight home after the game? Was there a homecoming that night? Yeah, we did actually. We uh, weren't home till around 12 or nearly 1 o'clock, I think it was. So it was late enough, but there was still um, a very big crowd in Ballyfaya to meet us. So delighted to see that. And then um, we started early Saturday, or Sunday and we were watching the Valley Ale and the Thompson match and the World Cup. So it was great to Sunday <laughs> in Ballyfaya all day. So, yeah. It's a real family affair for you as well, Neve, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and um, dad's over us, and um, there's four sisters involved, and yeah, but like that, it's not just us. There's, there's Kellys, there's Kennys, there's Wards, there's Gallagher's. It's like a stereotypical world GA club of our whole relationships, cousins, friends, grew up together. So yeah, kind of ticks that box. Yeah, you say it's a stereotypical rural GA club, but it's a stereotypical All Ireland uh, harvesting GA club. When your dad's generation were there, it was the men who were routinely talked about as uh, potential All Ireland champions and multiple All Ireland champions, and now it's the women. Uh, what 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 is it in the what's in the water? I I honestly don't know, but um, it's probably there's not much else going on to be totally honest. I mean, you either play GA or you know there's not really many other options where we live, but um. It's just, it's nice and it's kind of um, just extra nice the fact there were so much um, fathers and daughters involved in 93, 94. I think we were saying last year there was 10 direct links between fathers and daughters of those on the 93, 94 All-Ireland winning teams and those on the, the our teams, so to speak. And that's not even counting uncles and cousins or relations. So it's just nice, like, um, especially like it's fathers and daughters as opposed to fathers and sons. It's kind of a nice uh other uh, spin on it. Does it matter, like, in a way, I, I, sorry, obviously it matters, right, but how much does it matter, I wonder, that they were so successful, that they, that actually winning in All-Ireland was something that wasn't, that didn't just happen in other clubs, that actually Sarsfields is a club that understands what it takes to compete at the very top level and so when your dads are talking to you as kids and when you were growing up as kids, you're like, there's All-Ireland medals in the house. Do you know it's not? Yeah, no, it actually, there's a great tradition, and I do think um, that counts for something when you're trying to get over the line. I mean, and we were going up, like I was probably too young to remember it, but all the talk, you'd be going to your dad's matches. And I remember going up on the train when they lost to Burr in the All Ireland in 98. And that was so exciting for me, and it stuck with me. And even when they were kind of coming towards the ladder into their careers and they were playing Athen Ryan County Finals, and we'd all be going in on buses and we'd all be in. Iggy Daly's pub and after my afterwards and uh, just great occasions and yeah, no, it definitely had some kind of an influence. <laughs> it must be so special, Eve, as well, for it to be Croke Park, like to be to be playing on that pitch that as you said that you used to go up and down on the train or whatever to watch matches, that must add to it as well. Ah uh, yeah, like it's absolutely brilliant and it's it's great the fact now that the LGFA and Camogie finals are there and um, it really is such a reward to get there with your club and it's special and it takes a few minutes to take it all in. The first time we went up, it's kind of surreal, but um, we've been there four times now and we, it's, we're so lucky and it's it's brilliant. It's extra special then winning on Pro Park. So. Yeah. What's what's it about this generation of, of girls in that team then? Because like the, the the team goes from not winning anything to all of a sudden being expected to win the All Ireland every year, essentially, or, <laughs> or to certainly be in contention. Like it's it's really gone from from famine to feast. Yeah, it is. I mean, like I'm the oldest on the panel anyway, or not the team. And it was kind of, uh, we won all Ireland and failed a title in 2007. And from that team, there's about five or six of us that kind of kickstarted everything. And we won our first um, senior championship in 2016. 
Um, and from there, underage talent has come through and we've won a numerous under 16s minors down through the years. So it's kind of just a, a good spell in the club's period, like, and it won't last forever, obviously not, like, especially given the fact we're such a kind of small area. But um, we're going to our glory years now at the moment. So we want to try and capitalize on it as much as we can while we can, because we're well aware it won't last and it's short lived in the grand scheme of things. How do you keep the motivation up year on year? Like, is it a case of coming back and, and maybe playing different opposition? Even, like, the fact that you were, it was it level at half time and then you go a point behind um, not long after half time at the weekend? So, like, that sort of game, when it's close like that, I, I'm sure it adds the uh, the intrigue to the following year then as well. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, first of all, it's kind of so hard to uh, go away. The competition is stiff and each and every year it's so tough. I mean, we only won the semi final and final by two points. So, uh, the motivation at a county level is 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 massive. So we kind of uh, don't be thinking about any All Ireland at the start of the year because we can't because we won't be long getting better if that's our kind of attitude. But um, I know like once you start winning, like you can't beat it, and you want to get that feeling every single year. And uh, we're on a roll now, as I said, but like it won't last forever. So that's why it kind of gives us that extra motivation to stay going while we can. It's part of the motivation the fact that the games come thick and fast and that the split season actually because we, we've heard some people talking about this like the there's it's a really long period of time that you're playing if you're as, as successful at club level as you guys are um, but actually you know I you, you can tell us as a player is that not the best crack it's game not loads of training game not loads of training and actually that's a very nice routine to get into and it turns out all the games tend to be big games yeah, no, this year definitely is a bit season. I'd be 100% in favour of it. Um, it's great to have the final over for Christmas now. Like personally, I wouldn't like to be <laughs> based into Christmas and then January having to go back hard training, especially in the kind of weather we're in now. So uh, yeah, no, I love it. It's quick, it's fast, it's games. That's all you want. You're kind of just ticking over between matches and I'm a huge fan of it anyway, that's for sure. Who was your, who were your Camogie heroes growing up, Neve? Um, well, I suppose from a Galway perspective, uh, Anne-Marie Hayes, um, my mother would have been uh, very heavily involved in the Camogie in Galway since we were very small and we'd, she'd be bringing us to every single match. And Anne-Marie Hayes, definitely. And also then my auntie, Emma Kilkelly, and my mother's youngest sister, um, she would have been one person we looked up to. And it was actually extra special with myself and Claude and Orla got to win in All-Ireland with her in 2013 with Galway. So, um, yeah, Emma and Amory from a Galway perspective. And then outside of Galway, I was in awe of that Wexford team that one of the three in a row, they were my year was going up. And the likes of Kate Kelly, the Lacey's, the, uh, Ursa Jacob. And they were an unbelievable team. And they seemed to have like great characters on that team as well. So I used to love watching them growing up. And then, Obviously, when we were playing against Ireland, and they were a couple of Ireland, all Irelands, you'd be like nearly like, oh God, <laughs> it's, they're here in the flesh. And yeah. <laughs> it must be funny for yourself and your sisters and teammates to now be those heroes that, that you, you've spoken about. Like, there, there's um, young girls and, and young boys as well, probably at that uh, celebration at one in the morning you were talking about. And uh, looking up to you guys now as the as the inspirations. Oh, yeah, I know it's nice. Like, I mean, but. Um, I mean, we're only doing what we love, like, and it's easy to do it um, while you have, like, such a strong club around you and all the players and we're all pulling the one way and it's it's just easy when you're winning as well. When it comes to the scoring at the weekend, so was it four points for yourself, two from play, two from freeze? Um, like, those those moments especially where, where someone has to step up and look at you, as, as you said, as you're, you're, you're the captain of the team, so stepping up and being the leader in those moments is, is something that, that comes naturally to you, but... It must still feel a little bit extra pressurised when it's not out in final. Oh, yeah, like it probably does. But when you're out in pitch, you don't really feel any of that pressure. I mean, I think it's worse if you're over a team. I think that dad was saying it's it's worse when you're not playing. You don't have any control over the situation. So we're well used to it. That's probably the one um, positive of being in so many other in the finals. You kind of like just take it as match in its own merit. And, and sure, like it's easy to take the freeze. It's a free shot of goal. So... Uh, no, it's just absolutely delighted and yeah, it's great. Um, There's a fair bit of travel involved for you, I think, if I, if I'm not mistaken, you're working in Dublin, but obviously you've got to get back for training for the club and the, the county. Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't with Galway now this year, um, but uh, I, yeah, I go, like I'm, I, that's the one positive of COVID, I suppose. I um, work in Dublin Monday, Tuesday, then I'd come home Tuesday night or Wednesday morning and then work from home that day and then we usually train Wednesday and then back up and then Friday and then the weekend as well. So yeah, kind of on the road constantly. <laughs> um, but my sister Claude is double based as well, so she's in the exact same position as me. 
So, um, yeah, but it's all worth it now anyway, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And like, I'd rather physically be at all the training sessions than missing them because um, it doesn't really replicate you and stuff on your own when you're with the group collectively. So, yeah. I, that's definitely one of the benefits then of COVID, the, the uh, ability to remote work and it just being kind of totally taken for granted that, yeah, we're going to have to do this because that's the way of the world. Yeah, no, like it's 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 the perfect um, mix now because personally, I myself, I wouldn't like working from home five days a week, but uh, it's three and two usually and and that's, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's such flexibility and it's really helped me in my club camogie career, definitely. So it makes that sustainable then. There's no... Um... There's no impetus to slow down. You're, you know, you're talking about harvesting all Ireland and, and trying while well, you have this golden generation to keep going. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, one hundred percent. Like, um, we're all we're not we're not too old yet anyway, so we'll keep going while we can. And there's plenty more girls coming through to take places. So, uh, there's a serious competition this year. I think this year is the first year where you're like you know, you wouldn't know what the team would be every single year. And then, obviously, when we lost all the players, we lost from injury then that bore fruit the fact that we had girls that could come in and replace those that were lost straight away. So, uh, yeah, long may continue, but at the same time, we're under no illusions as to it'll end soon, or it'll end eventually, like, you know, you're always going to get fit. You'd get to travel with Cloda then, I guess, for, for matches. At least it makes it a bit easier commuting up and down. I, well, actually, she's a teacher, so she she wouldn't be able to come home. So sometimes right. I do and sometimes I don't. It's kind of a mixture, but uh, we see we see each other enough. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, like, can you can you empathize, empathize with someone like Shane Walsh who, you know, sees the traveling up and down and eventually has to go? Well, look, I'm I'm just gonna pick up a club in Dublin and 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 stop that commuting for a while. I uh, yeah, you can see both sides of it. Yeah, and um, definitely. But personally, myself, and um, I don't know, like. There's a special feeling with your own club and I don't think you can ever replicate that with, when you're playing with people you grew up with. Um, it just means, I think, personally, 100% more than that. that I mean, I could have easily transferred to a Dublin club, but why would I like to know? There's no better club to play for in Camogie. So, um, yeah, it just doesn't, I, it wouldn't mean the same to me anyway, personally, but yeah. One life, one club. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, yeah. Well, for me, anyway, until I'm probably not good enough to be playing for you, them. So maybe when I get older, <laughs> you have a bit a special relationship with your with your your granny as well, Neve, for especially the night before matches. Oh yeah, um, yeah. She's brilliant. Uh, she does work beside us. We all just go over to her, and she's um, just she just prays the hard rose and like she wouldn't be uh, watching the matches. She wouldn't even listen to her and go out with him. She just kind of asks how we got on, and she just say her prayers, light her candles and be asking how everyone is and yeah, I know she's she's my she like but as as every other grandmother and grandfather and we were super supporters and it like it's just the number one topic of conversation in Sarsfields and seeing them all after the match it kind of makes it extra special. There there is that great scene in in A Year Till Sunday, the, the Galway Night ninety eight documentary where they're bringing the trophy back in and into one of the players' grandparents' houses I think and there's the old yeah. grandfather lying in the bed of the trophy like uh, it, it probably brings it home to you how much it means when when you do get to bring the trophy home and and show it to, to people of, of various generations, young and old. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. And, like, you don't realise, like, how much people like that live for them kind of things. I mean, they get such enjoyment out of us and it's just delighted to be in a position to be able to give them that joy and uh, they're so proud to be from the area, you know, that kind of way and be telling everyone and <laughs> it's just, it's brilliant and uh, yeah, as I said, it's uh, we're just privileged, like, you know. Well, listen, Neve, congratulations. Uh, enjoy the Tuesday Club and however long it lasts, it's going to be a proper <laughs> Christmas Club this year, so well done. It's a yeah, sensational definitely. story. Thanks, William. Thanks. So, uh, Neve McGrath there, Camogie legend, um, part of the Sarsfields uh, Golden Generation who are, as I said, harvesting all Ireland at the moment.